Oh, ah. Uh. Boy, okay. Um. Wow, thank you. Thank you so much for that warm ovation. Um. As I stare at this magnificent bust of Mark Twain, I'm reminded of how humbled I am to receive such an honor and how I vow to take very special care of it. Um, I will never let it out of my sight. I will find a place of honor in my house for this magnificent bust. If my children try to touch it or even look at it, I will beat them. It, 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 it means that much to me. Um, in fact, I, I told my wife that maybe I should buy it its own seat for the plane ride home. <laughs> and, uh, no, no, I'm not done. I'm not done. I'm not, I'm not, no, no, I just started the speech. Why would you think I'm done? I want to sincerely thank the Kennedy Center for this prize and this and the fine folks at PBS for airing this special. I am the 14th recipient of the Mark Twain Prize. And you're probably asking yourself, why did it take so long? <laughs> well, for 13 consecutive years, I have been begged by the Kennedy Center to accept this award. And for 13 consecutive years, I have emphatically said no. <laughs> for years, I had many questions about this Mark Twain, the first being, who is he? <laughs> it then dawned on me that since I was a small boy, I have thoroughly enjoyed his delicious fried chicken. And then my wife informed me that I was thinking of Colonel Sanders, not Mark Twain. It turns out that he is considered America's finest author and humorist, but that his real name is not Mark Twain. It was Jerry Goldman. Before that, it was Judy Bloom. And before that, of course, we all know the name, Samuel Langhorn Chimmins. Despite my failings to grasp the importance of Mark Twain and what exactly he did, I decided to accept this award because of the prize money. <laughs> One billion dollars. <laughs> paid out over the next 10,000 years. <laughs> to say that I am thrilled to be here is a, is a complete understatement. Uh, and to make this evening even more thrilling, I have just been informed that I am only the 11th Caucasian to receive this prestigious award. <laughs> Pretty cool. I can't tell you how enough how special it is to stand here on this stage at the Kennedy Center in front of this amazing audience while being watched on PBS by hundreds of people. <laughs> It's very surreal. Um, you have to understand, as, as a kid growing up in Irvine, California, where I would sit in my room and listen to records of Steve Martin and the original Saturday Night Live cast, or stay up late and watch Johnny Carson on The Tonight Show to see what, what comedians he would have on, I, I had one dream, one singular focus, even at the earliest age. I can remember wanting to do one thing, and one thing only, sell insurance. 